Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I am here joined by Mr. Don Guo, the co-founder of Broctagon Fintech Group. Welcome, sir. Hey, thank you very much, Hun. So let's start with an introduction. So what does Broctagon Fintech Group provide? What services does it provide? All right, um, so Broctagon, we started as a um, solutions provider for um, brokers. Mm -hmm. All right, so we provide trading platforms, we provide liquidity, we provide the back-end systems, trading systems. And um, that was like five years back. Mm -hmm. And the recent two years, I mean, we try to get onto the um, blockchain wave as well. Mm -hmm. So right now, we are trying to, trying to combine both. Mm -hmm. So um, now we have blockchain developments, we have um, ICO advisory, mm -hmm. and at the same time, uh, cryptocurrency derivatives, yes, which will be our main focus for this coming year. Now, when it comes to specific services that you provide, um, how would you help the company out when they approach you for a consultation? Well, um, First thing I would say, um, I would need them to know what they want. So <laughs> of course, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, instead of um, like, you know, tr trying to follow the trend because everyone is doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, if in the case that, you know, they know what they want, um, in terms of technical aspects, we can actually provide them with uh, almost any solution from exchanges to trading platforms, to liquidities, bridges, APIs, I mean, fixed APIs. Yeah, to various um, financial institutions and stuff. Yeah. When it comes to the financial market as well as uh, fintech or derivatives, um, regulations cannot go uh, overlooked. Um, it's a difficult current to navigate, especially in the cryptocurrency market, as there is not much regulation. Now, how are you dealing with this matter? All right. So um, on the financial derivative part, uh, we actually have an entity which is uh, regulated in uh, Cyprus. Mm -hmm. So it is um, uh, EU regulatory. So we have actually um, paid a lot of deposit yeah, so that um, clients will know that the funds are safe. <laughs> yeah, so, we, so there's no way we can run away with client money because <laughs> that deposit will be used to pay back to the client. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So Pretty secure way, I assume. <laughs> yes, it is, definitely. And um, yeah, but I believe um, sooner or later, regulators will actually um, catch up with times. The mm -hmm. way things are progressing, we mm -hmm. see some countries already um, trying to regulate. Some countries are figuring it out. Some some countries, some regulators are stepping back and taking a taking a look at how things go. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just like um, any other things, you know, um, the products here and regulators will catch up with it. And once it happens, mm -hmm. then there is a certain set of rules to abide by. Yeah, and you know, everybody gets to enjoy the benefits of it. You believe that we are at the phase of deciding what's right or wrong. When it comes to the perspective of regulators? I mean, um, I would say so. Like the, the previous year, I think the whole blockchain community like is pretty divided mm -hmm. yeah, into those who really love the industry and people who just want to get something out of the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like um, there are a lot of scams and, and stuff. Yeah, and that's why you don't, see, you don't really see public confidence mm -hmm. yeah, because of all these issues. Yes. Yeah. Now, you, the Broctagon Fintech Group is based in Hong Kong and Singapore. So what is the current regulatory status when it comes to financial sectors, in, specifically in uh, Hong Kong and Singapore? Well, um, Hong Kong doesn't really have a very strong stand against um, blockchain, mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies and stuff. Um, neither does Singapore. In fact, um, Singapore, they're quite supportive. So you can actually see that a lot of um, blockchain startups, a lot of exchanges, they are actually um, changed their incorporation into Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's, yeah, our government is pretty supportive. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, um, when it comes to collecting money from public, then it wouldn't be that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there would be more regulations, yeah, so as to protect the public interest. Mm -hmm. yeah, but generally, if you know, um, someone likes to be in the blockchain industry, yeah, wants to get involved as a startup. I They're very Sing supportive. Yeah, Singapore is very supportive in terms of policies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. since we are in a blockchain conference, I have to ask you. So, the traditional fintech market, you've been in the market for the industry for like five or six years for a long time. But blockchain is relatively new. However, yes. what me personally, I am curious about is combining blockchain technology with the current existing fintech market, such as, uh, like you mentioned, cryptocurrency derivatives, as well as uh, blockchain-based uh, asset management or brokerage system. So uh, do you guys look into that particularly, or are there any plans to expand or combining blockchain technology with the current fintech market? 
Oh yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. So, like for example, um, one of the projects that we are currently handling mm -hmm. called the Stacks. All right. So, um, what it actually does is that it is a protocol, blockchain protocol, that um, whitelists the wallets. Mm -hmm. All right, through a standard KYC system by financial institutions and stock exchanges. Mm -hmm. So, like. Um, Members of this protocol will actually be like um, financial institutions. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, anybody who wishes to launch an STO, all right, can actually use this protocol, mm -hmm. and um, you would be safe to say that you know all the wallets, all the users, all right, um, in the protocol, they are they won't be involved in any money laundering or mm -hmm. breaching any um, security laws in any country. So all uh, the the runners of the exchanges or derivatives product wouldn't have to look into every customer's a KYC or AML. They would just have to look into stacks and see whether they're uh, all legit or not, right? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Now, uh, the, the derivatives market is currently, when it comes to crypto, the crypto derivatives market has been very uh, interesting with the launch of backed, the, the futures market, especially with the launch of backed as well as the CME, CBOE's uh, futures product and the yes. OTC trading as well as other derivatives such as, um, well, other derivatives. Uh, but what is your perspective on the, maybe the prediction on the futures, futures market as well as the derivatives market in the coming 2019? All right, I think um, derivatives would actually um, help a lot in the industry, mm -hmm. all right, because like there are just too many um, people who are wanting to actually um, be involved in cryptocurrencies, but um, there are high entry of barriers in terms of knowledge, like they need a wallet and they need to know hot, hot wallet, cold mm -hmm. wallet, like private key, public key, it's just too complicated. Mm -hmm. So like with derivatives, um, it actually makes everything so much easier. You just need to open a trading account with your broker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you don't even need to hold the, the, the currencies because it's a derivative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, with that volume, all right, it can actually even out the volatility, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people would be saying that, you know, oh, once the financial, um, People come in and there'll be high volatility. No, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, if there's more yeah. capital in the market, the market will be more difficult to manipulate or move, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, bringing up institution, uh, the influx of institutional investors it is what all crypto traders or crypto uh, enthusiasts are waiting for currently. So, would you give a prediction on the uh, timing when the institutional investors are going to come in? I think. Um, I think there are already institutional players in the field, but um, the amount of um, liquidity that they inject is um, pretty much small yet because like, um, it's not really safe. Mm -hmm. like, uh, there's a lot of um, factors that would affect their investments. Mm -hmm. um, but as regulatory slowly kicks in, I think there would be more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely this year will be exciting, mm -hmm. especially on the institutional part because mm -hmm. like um, we've seen some countries already have the framework for um, regulating cryptocurrencies, blockchain, and I think there'll be more and more of it, especially when like um, more um, big name countries, they start to adopt yeah, the regulatory frameworks. Yeah, that will give institutions a, a lot of confidence. Now, uh, moving on to another topic then. Um, now, the application of FinTech, no, no, the blockchain technology is, uh, it's expansive, meaning that there's a lot of fields that blockchain technology can help, well, can potentially help. Now, blockchain, uh, Rocktail and FinTech Group also, like you said, provide ICO consulting services then. So in your own perspective, uh, which aspect or which field do you believe that it is necessary, necessary for blockchain technology to be implemented on? Oh, lots of it. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, yeah, like um, one thing I'm very impressed with is um, MedTech. Oh, medical, med medical, yes. Yes, that's right. The yeah. tracking medical records. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I mean, logistics has already been, like blockchain has already been implemented in logistics for mm -hmm. quite a long time. Um, and also food safety. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Like, like Walmart is doing, right? Yes, Walmart and even um, Alibaba, they are mm -hmm. looking into it right now. Yeah, so um, these are things of um, everyday lives, like um, medical care, food, yeah, so I think these two industries are, yes, they would definitely need the blockchain. Yeah. Now, you are currently here in Korea and taking part in Chain Plus 2019. Now, Korea is said to be one of the uh, hot spots for the crypto enthusiasts, right? So yeah. what, what's your Korean experience so far? How's your Korean experience like so far? 
Oh, it's really good. Like it's my first time um, attending an event in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like um, we've gathered a lot of interest, a lot of inquiries. Yeah, and um, we have actually spoken to a lot of people who who are really um, like enthusiastic about mm -hmm. about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it's a it's a good it's a good market. Yeah, when it comes to cryptocurrencies and stuff. Um, in terms of financial wise, um, they might have more regulations, but hey, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you guys are based in Hong Kong, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> then finishing up on the interview, uh, would you care to give your last comment to our Korean viewers to raise awareness of what you guys are doing or what the works you guys are, uh, you know, taking part into, or just the overall awareness of the blockchain technology as well to the camera over here? Oh. Um, hi viewers from Korea, this is Don from Broctagon Fintech Group. Um, I hope that in time to come, in this coming year, like uh, you guys would have a safe environment, yeah, whereby um, your investments, all right, your, uh, your investments capital is actually protected, all right, and also um, having more good projects, yeah, to invest in. Uh, I think that is something that everyone hopes for, and um, likewise, that's my wish to you guys as well. So, uh, any special news coming out from Broctagon Fintech Group, like Broctagon ICO, so BTC, BTG coin or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have plans for an ICO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far, um, we have been working hard um, to, to make the products work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I'm sure if there are any new updates, like, <laughs> you will be one of the first people to know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Yeah. That is all the questions we have today. Hey, okay, thank you very much. Hoon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Don Gould, the co-founder of Broctagon Fintech Group. Thank you for watching.